Good evening and welcome to Power BI Manchester November's 2020 session. Uh, good evening, welcome to um, Alex Taylor, the, the, the organiser of Power BI Manchester, uh, if you haven't attended before. Uh, tonight we've got four fantastic talks uh, in store for you. Uh, we're starting earlier to allow for these four fantastic talks. We'll aim to wrap up by around eight o'clock. Um, so let me just do a quick intro. Um, the Power BI Manchester user group is normally a face-to-face -face user group and I'm sure some of you guys have, have attended previously. We've been going for over four years now. Um, so it'll be, it'll be um, we'll come four years, four years in January when we did our first meetup. We've now had probably in excess of 50 uh, events uh, and it is the largest Power BI user group outside of London um, in the UK. And we've now got in excess of 3,000 members. Uh, as I said, we do normally meet in Manchester, but prior to COVID-19, uh, but since then we've, we've adapted and we've been doing Power BI webinars uh, since March. Uh, I said these sessions are a great way to network with, with, with colleagues uh, to, to understand the fun things about using Power BI, the updates, and also net, networking with, with fellow peers and getting tips and tricks. Uh, a bit of information regards to Power BI user group. Um, uh, we've been rated at 4.6 uh, for our session, so that's an US star rating, uh, and we've had some good testimonials as you can see from the slides. Uh, a bit about me, uh, I've been a recruiter for over 16 years, I'm a BI data enthusiast, enthusiast with me to organise with uh, who's passionate about data, love attending and organising exceptional events, uh, and I head up the uh, Robert Walters uh, Business Intelligence Data and Advanced Analytics team. I recruit in all the technologies mentioned on the right hand side, so data analytics, data science, big data, data engineering, data strategy, BI, architecture, visualisation, data quality and governance. So. If you are looking to recruit or if you are looking to hire someone, please get in touch with me. But if you are looking for a new role, whether it be perm or contract, do drop me a line. And my details are at the bottom, alex.taylor.walter.com. And that is also my mobile number. And tonight, Alex, session... can I just hold you? Can you just share your screen again, please? Oh, well, yeah. Sorry, mate. You dropped out, have we? Yeah. Technical <laughs> issue. <laughs> Thanks. We'll get that on. Where did you lose me? <laughs> uh, just as just as you were mentioning um, your um, your contact details at the bottom. Right. There we oh, go. Okay. You're back on now, mate. So um, tonight's agenda, we've got four fantastic speakers, as I mentioned. Uh, we've got Chris starting in a few minutes' time, uh, then followed by Michelle, um, and uh, and then we've got Maria and Dania from the Barcelona. Uh, user group. She's not actually going on now, so Maria will be joining us around seven o'clock after she's wrapped up her um, Barcelona session. Um, I said, do add your questions to the right hand side text box. Uh, myself, Ben, and also our, our guest helper, Chef, will endeavour to answer them. If not, we'll pu push them to our, our guest speakers and they'll come back with an answer as soon as possible. Quick intro about our speakers. Uh, so, Chris is no stranger to Power BI Machine User Group. It's uh, his third. Uh, talk with the user group. He is a Power BI uh, expert uh, specialising in DAX. Uh, he's a user group leader in the Netherlands uh, where, where he's, he, he's going to be um, presenting live from this evening uh, and he likes to call himself a technical chef where he prepares a data buffet of self-service BI for his customers in the Netherlands. Uh, he's also now touching along uh, with Azure Data Platform uh, and he's a fantastic speaker and is heavily involved in the data community around the world. Uh, Michelle is also a Power BI um, uh, community uh, 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 organiser. He works alongside um, the Dutch user group with Henk Lutman, another speaker who has spoke, spoken with us this year. Um, and he also writes several Power BI books, so uh, Power BI, Power Pivot modelling books. And as I said, he's also, I believe he's been MVP twice, if not three times, he's been, been, been voted MVP uh, uh, for his services. And again, he's, he's also a data analytics consultant and trainer. Uh, I'm sure he'll go into a bit more detail when he speaks with us later. Uh, over to Maria. Uh, Maria is a Power BI trade consultant. Um, she is co-organiser with Dania of the Power BI user group. Uh, she runs a company called Analytic Mood, which will go into a bit more detail. And she talks about all the projects she does in terms of consulting and training, uh, giving training to companies online around Power BI. Uh, and Dania, uh, again, she is the co-organiser of the Barcelona user group um, alongside um, Maria. She is a consultant for Spaghetti Cap Gemma at the moment. Uh, she's a blogger, she's a speaker, uh, she's involved with various different boot camps, summits, etc. Uh, and she will be joining us around about quarter past seven. Without further ado, I'll pass over to Chris. 
Good evening, Chris. How are you? I'm good, uh, Alex. Thank you uh, for the introduction. It's a it's a big honor to uh, to present again for the Manchester User Group. Um, yeah, I'm really looking uh, forward to this. Um, it's, it's a shame we couldn't be live in, in Manchester again and sharing uh, beer and pizza like we have done previously. Uh, and I'm sure that the user group attendees would, would have loved to have seen you again. Um, you were very popular the last few times. No, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alex. So okay. Let I me share my screen. Chair is now sharing your, your screen, yeah. So, so you are now you are now sharing. Can you guys see it? Can you guys see the screen? Uh, just give us two seconds there, Chris. Let's, uh, we've got your big video on there at the moment. There we go. Now we can see both the uh, Power BI and you. So away you go, my friend. OK, now let's, uh, let's kick off. Um, welcome uh, to my presentation about DEX prototyping. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to give this presentation. Um, it's also the full uh, full length presentations that I'm doing online. So uh, as we mentioned before, I, my preference always to, to, yeah, to, to really connect to people and to, to, to be in, in, in person. But uh, in these strange times, yeah, we cannot do anything else than uh, organize online events. Um, but what I will try to do during this presentation is to uh, yeah, to to get as close as possible to uh, yeah, to to get a connection with you guys and you yeah stay tuned and you will then understand what I mean by this. Um, so the Dex prototype of this presentation is uh, is a brand new one. So I've I've also not presented this uh, this presentation anywhere else, and because it's the first time. We can actually say this is a prototype of deck prototyping um, because yeah, this is so fresh and um, yeah, I, I've just recently started to uh, to experiment with uh, this technique and um, yeah, let's uh, please bear with me and uh, let's uh, kick off. All right, so why? Why can I dream about Manchester? What, what makes Manchester so special to me? And there's one particular thing in Manchester that I'm, um, yeah, that I'm extremely jealous about. And that's the Manchester curry mile. And I, I love Indian curries, so I, uh, I uh, used to live in the, in the UK. And that's when I really, uh, yeah, really got introduced to the Indian curries, and yeah, I love it so much. And uh, yeah, the, the actually the sad thing is, is that in the the city that where I where I live now, they don't have any Indian restaurant. So you must imagine you guys have like one one street just full of Indian restaurants and can enjoy all the nice flavors. And myself, I uh, I actually need to drive to another city to even uh, taste this nice food. And uh, so the curries is something is, is the theme of this uh, presentation. All right, let's uh, let's start how an uh, maybe a typical day in your office uh, might look like. So yeah, so as I, my, my uh, so so my role is uh, in, in business is I'm, I'm a Power BI consultant. And you, uh, yeah, you want to, to build dashboards that serve the needs of the of the stakeholders. And yeah, in order to to get all the the needs to to get all, gather all the requirements, um, yeah, we talk to the to the end client. So uh, usually, if we want to understand what they do, we have a conversation. Um, yeah, then we we write write things down to to make sure that we understand each other. Then, um, yeah, then you 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 go to all the data sources. So yeah, you look uh, to all the possible like databases or maybe files or any any data source you can imagine. You you try to find the information that the end client is looking for. And after you've identified all the right data sources, you're going to build a new. Model. So this, this, what I mean here is like 
the data model. So for example, if you use Power BI Desktop, you import the data and then you have the data imported in your data model. One of the things that I see in uh, yeah when I when I uh, when I go to several clients is that when you look into a data model, the data models uh, can be sometimes almost one to one to a data source. So there might be like a database table in a source system or a CSV, and people just select everything and they import it. And that's not a good thing. And the reason why that is not good is. First of all, the more data you load, which uh, and probably it's too much data, that data is not used, but is it's held into memory. And the more memory that is more, the more memory that is consumed, usually the slower your queries become. Secondly, there's also another disadvantage, and that's that your your data model get cluttered by a lot of information that you probably don't need, but it makes it difficult to understand your data model. And that's also uh, so the maintainability of your system. And I'm, more, I'm now looking more from a technical angle. Also, that uh, goes down like it's more difficult to maintain because you have to look all the time at to so many columns. So yeah, so that's and and the reason if you think about why does this happen, that's probably also because it's the order that we we as I said like you you. You connect to the data source, so you, you start to reason from uh, the data source that is available. And but the thing is, is that what you, well, the most important thing is, is to capture the needs of the of your of your uh, stakeholders. All right. So now in this scenario, so I've I've I've, I've looked, I've dived into all the data sources. I, uh, you create a data model, and then you build the nice graph, and then. The nice graph is then something you present back to the stakeholder, and yeah, you and then you might this might do this more often. Um, what I'm what the, what I'm showing you here is just one end user, and I'm one consultant. But if you're going to a, a big organization, you have multiple stakeholders. And you have possibly also multiple consultants who do all, all the time the same thing and probably using Power BI Desktop. What do we get? Well, as you can imagine, if more consultants and more people, what's the technical end result? What, what do you get? You, you will get data sources and uh, data model and then the, the graphs, but you will get multiple of them. And then, we come to another pain point. And the pain point here is that when you when you're getting multiple models. It might also contain uh, the same information, but a little bit different. Um, so for example, you might have a table here like your customer table. Introduced by one of the consultants, then another consultant or maybe the same consultant, but then creates with a different PVIX. Another data model with again a customer, but it might be slightly different. Or what could also be different is the connection between the tables. So then, if the connection, if if we have like a different type of relationship in one model, it might be different to the other, which might produce different results. And what do you get then? Is that when people are talking, uh, when people are in a boardroom and you have directors talking to each other, they might talk about which numbers are right and that's not what you want you don't want to talk about which numbers you want to have one version of the truth and you want to drive your company on one on one version of the numbers um so yeah this is a pain point we want, we want one version of the truth so how does one version of the truth look like well we still have multiple data sources on the left hand side on the right hand side we create different um yeah, uh, dashboards and visualizations, but all sourced from the same model. This is like the then you will work from the, this also uh, improves a lot of the maintainability as well, because if you as an um, from a technical point of view, if you have only one model to maintain, it's a lot easier than multiple models.
All right, let's now go to one day at one of my clients. As a consultant, I talk to my stakeholder and I write down the requirements. So those requirements typically look about, uh, uh, writes down like which, uh, what is he talking about? Like, is he talking about customers or talk about sales? You write the things you write down. And so you get an idea what he, what the stakeholder needs. But then I want to get access to the data source. However, like I, I've already, I, 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 I made it a little bit, I faded it out. I did it on purpose because what I mean here is that the data sources are not clear yet or they're not accessible yet. So yeah, well, I've wrote down some requirements. I'm, I'm waiting for the, the data sources. And time passes by. And of course, in business, time is precious. So not a good thing. But after some time, yes, I got the data source. So the, the data sources are available. And then I continue. I built the, my data model, create a nice visualization. And finally, I am able to present my results to the stakeholder. Here we see that like, like the, 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 the problem of course, what I just already mentioned is the time. It takes a lot of time uh, before I can show something to the end user. And, um, and the time, it, th th that's precious time. And I also need to spend uh, yeah, quite a lot of time to, 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 to make those, to, to, to get those requirements, but because eventually it, it, it will take a while before I can, I will be able to present him the right uh, visualizations. And this process is quite slow. So then I, I was trying to think, okay, how can we, how can we optimize this, this process? And then I will introduce now the concept of DEX prototyping. So what is DEX prototyping? Again, we have the stakeholder, but then instead of writing, um, you know, like writing lots of documentation and, and like which venerality, uh, which level of detail do I want to, um, kept, uh, do I need to store? What, what information do you need? Why not just start creating the data model from the start? And yeah, now guys, you might guys not think, oh wow, what's happening here? So how can you talk with an end client and straight go into the data model? You might ask, Where's the data coming from? You need data sources, right? And what I do with DEX prototyping is that I will uh, create the data. So I will generate the data using DEX. So I can just open up a clean Power BI desktop, write DEX code that generate the data. And of course you might be wondering, how do you do that? I will show you uh, soon. So in, I will also have a demo and then I will show you in detail how you can approach this. And then, so what you do is you, you talk with the client, you write DEX code, um, then you can create data. But uh, in addition, by writing the code to generate data, you also already focus also on the good data model. And a good data model, how can we describe what's a good data model? I, I don't have enough time in this session to go into uh, yeah, to all the details about the data modeling. But from a general point of view, how I like to see it is that when you, uh, in this Corona times, so it might be a bit difficult, but imagine you're in your, at your client and you go to the coffee machine. What are people talking about? Are they talking about products? Um, now, if they talk about the product, well, probably product is a table that you need to incorporate in your data model. Um, of course, you have, the, you have time, um, but also what's also key here is to, to, to get the right granularity. So the right level of detail that you need to do your analysis. And what I'm always fighting for when I'm at the client is to get the lowest level from the start. And the reason is that even people, even when you would ask, what do you want now? They might uh, say, I want it on uh, maybe on the month level. It's fine, but 
after some time, you they probably want to go to the date level or even lower. And the cost of later changing this software, because we as consultants, uh, yeah, the clients need to invest in us. So, it, it, and the time that we, if we need to change the code, we can probably better build it on the lowest level from the start. So I always try to get the lowest level, but of course needs to be available in the data source. All right, so you, I, you write the X code, you build, you already start working on the right data model. Then, because the data is generated, we have a data model, we can also create the visualization. And by having this visualization, the feedback loop is already closed because I can show the report to my end user, and then the end user can already see, hey, oh, this is how it's going to look like. Oh, wait a second, if I have this graph, oh, I want to do this or that. And by, by having this short trip and doing this from an early start in the process, you can already uh, get engaged with your stakeholders. So for example, in the previous example, what I said, there was a, a client, the data wasn't even available, and it takes a long time. But if you show something that's already, even if the data is not real, you can already, they can already start to think and you can build the graphs and they can yeah, visualize and, and, and you can build your dashboard. And the good thing here is because you're already building a good data model, and if you do it properly, all the measures you write will already be, they will already be ready. They're, they're finished because those, if the data model is correct, you write the, the right measures, then those measures can also be used later. And what do I mean with later? Well, at some point we don't want fake data. So the real data will become available, what you see here on the right hand side of the slide, and the data is available, and then you will make a swap later. So once the data is generated, uh, the data that is generated will be swapped with real data. It won't affect the measures uh, because they are because the, 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 the table structure will stay the same. It's just loading the real data. And in this way is that by building a proper data model, you're already doing really useful work because you want to work towards that one data model and that one data model needs to be well modeled because it's your one data model. And, um, and also, the, if you model it correctly, your code will also be more clean, your code will be more maintainable, and these are all very important things when you, um, yeah, when you do a piece of Power BI work at your client. All right, so I, I was wondering at this moment, uh, are there any questions in the chat? And if not, then I will uh, I will continue. No, we've got, got no questions. It all seems pretty clear to me so far, Chris. Doing a great job, doing a great job. No, thank you, cheers. Then I will uh, let me continue because let's, uh, let's go into the demo. So I'm doing here a demo of, uh, you know, of the Indian food the food I love so much. And um, before I start is that I've been to Manchester and I've been to an amazing restaurant. And for all the guys in Manchester, it's, it's called Mowgli, Mowgli Street Food and they have uh, delicious food. And so I thought today, eh, it's almost uh, here in the Netherlands, almost dinner time. So if I look too much at the food, uh, I cannot stop. <laughs> Um, hey Chris, can I just interrupt there? This yeah, is really important. I've also eaten there, and I suspect yeah. um, Alex has as well. Yeah, superb. So if you're in Manchester, check out Mowgli Street Food. And I know a lot oh. of our, uh, uh, our people who are attending who are from Manchester will also have been there. Yeah, I've eaten there many times. It's lovely. It is. <laughs> I can. I, I've, awesome actually, I've already. If you go to the website, I uh, I've been to. I think there are actually in Manchester there are two. So you have one in the corn exchange, and you have one in the. Uh, let me see. It's, it's the University Green. So uh, even two places. So it's lovely food. So okay, let's uh, let's if we if we look at the menu so which I have here. So this is the menu of all the dishes that you can order at uh, Mowgli. And well, let's. I want to start, you know, play with a data set. We don't have any data, so okay, how can we uh, incorporate this data into our data set? Let's open Power BI Desktop. So how can we? So the way how I've done it here, I, I actually I have tried initially with 
power uh, just just to experiment with power query and trying to 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 parse it, but it didn't really work out. So what I eventually uh, uh, did uh, was was doing is I was just putting it straight into Dex code. So how would the, how does that look like? Um, and that's here. So there's there's an uh, I've created a table, and this is the the menu item. So this is something you can order from the menu. And here the first uh, Dex code is available. So what I do here is that I, I first define a data table, and in this data table I provide it with an uh, with an ID, and then I I, I have a, an, an item type. So the item type here is whether is it food or is it drinks. Then uh, and then all the other stuff here I've literally put from the PDF, so that I have like a nice data set uh, data set to play with. And as you can see here, it was quite some uh, typing. And this is our first data set. How does it look like? Then, of course, one of X when when you execute the the code, then as you expect here. Uh, it's just loaded in here. So that's the first part. So we have menu items, but then yeah, if we go to a restaurant, it would be very nice to to go with you at the, uh, with you to the to the restaurant with anyone who is attending the session, um, just to get as close as possible. So, uh, so the next thing that I did is I looked at the attendees for tonight. So there were 102 people were coming. And what I've done is I've picked a first name and a last name. And I did a and what I do, I combine them all to all, all the different permutations of uh what yeah of, of the first names and the last names. And that will become the customer. So we all go to Mowgli tonight. As you can see here, I uh, this is me. The ring. And then as you can see, I, I brought some family with me. Um, but this is the cross join of all the first names, all the last names, and then uh, put them in one table. And then we get an audience of 3,000, more than 3,000 uh, people. The way how I create this data set is the same as the other one, just by creating a data table, put it into uh, to DAX, and it is loaded. Um, also, this, uh, this you might imagine all the, the code that I'm using, I am also uh, willing to share it with you guys. So. Uh, I will come back to it later how you can get hold of this, but uh, don't worry. Like, because I can imagine I'm showing quite a lot of DEX codes, and it might maybe be too fast. The goal is not to understand all the DEX code into detail, but it's just the idea that I, I show you what's possible, so you get a, an idea what 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 you can do, and then later when you get the real code, you can really play with this. All right, so we have a customer, and we have uh, the menu. Then, of course, in every model, yeah, we have a date dimension. And also here, I created just an, uh, a simple version. The one thing that you might think, OK, what's this? And then you can see here, I'm, I'm, uh, there's a start and an end date, but I'm, I'm, I'm selecting this from a different table. And what I've done here is that I've created an, a separate table, an, an, uh, a configuration table. And this uh, configuration table contains all the uh, yeah, like settings, and then I can just refer to one place because I'm using the start and end date from multiple places in the code. Um, and then here we see an, uh, a calendar, a calendar, a calendar function, and that will just create uh, from the start to the end date the whole uh, range. All right. This is the this is how how 
the detail that I want to discuss about the, the date table. Hey Chris, can I ask you a couple of questions because they're pertinent to what we're where you are now? Yeah. Yeah, so they come in on the QA. Um the first one is um copying and pasting in from the menu. Is there not a nicer way to get data from a PDF? And I know we can uh, I've seen and and uh, people do some some analysis of PDFs to bring words in, but have you got any thoughts on that one? Yes, yeah. So what I mentioned previously, that is actually what I tried. But then when I did it with this particular PDF, it didn't work out nice. It was the ETL get got so complex that um, yeah, that 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 that, it, that I decided to uh, to do it in DEX. And another way, actually, also what I would also say with the DEX prototyping, it's also actually an advantage if you don't have any dependencies from your PBIX. So now now it makes it also nice and clean that I don't have any other. Uh, data sources. So, for example, when I want to share this with you guys, you guys, then I don't need you to say, okay, you need to put your PDF in a particular file location. So in that way, it's also an advantage. But but of course, it's cool because you're you're right. Like there are ways to to use a PDF as a data source, and that's of course very interesting. But in this occasion, it did not work. Yeah, excellent. And, and there's another kind of related question which comes down to making this transferable. And of course, the presentation or the title of the presentation is DAX Pro Set Pro <laughs> Tax Prototyping. But um, a couple of questions here, the same sort of one. You know, we're creating data tables in DAX. Would it not be easier to create in a spreadsheet? So we we'll just leave it at, at that. Any any responses to that? Uh, I would say uh for for what what I've shown you, what I've just shown you, and you can say yes, yeah, you could also just have copy pasted this in um, in Excel. Um, but then again, you have an, you, you will have an external dependencies, okay? But maybe it's not not too bad. But then later, what I will show you later, there are also more other examples. Then if, when you create like bigger data sets, then you can really use the the ex the the, the Dex language to 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 very nicely express the yeah, the way to generate the data. So it's um, especially also with bigger data sets. So for example, if I, if we want to create a data set with five million rows, then you might be diff then it might be difficult in Excel, in, in Dex, and in this engine, it's very uh, you got it because you're ready in Power BI Desktop. You can do it. Yeah, that makes sense. So Excel, of course, is for British government. No, UK government limited to about a million rows. Um, uh, if you'd want large data sets for performance testing, etc., then of course DAX is a very quick way of doing it. And as you say, you can just send that PBIX file around to anybody and they've got the data. I think that answers both of those. Thank you very much for the questions. Keep yeah. them coming in. Yeah, and maybe another, actually another thing I didn't mention is also source control because this um this dex code you can put this solution into a, a source control so if you for example use something like a tabular editor to 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 split your model into separate files then this become nicely part of your repository if you put an excel file for example in your code repository it's just a zip file basically so also that kind of things are also advantage of of this technique but of course you need to and you need to be able to write the dex code that's the the challenge here all right, shall I uh, continue, Ben? Yes, please. That was great. Thank you. OK, let's let's go into a, a next one. And that's the. Uh, this is where things come together. So now I'm, I created a table and this is uh, this is the dining table occupation. And what I've done here is I've created a table. As you can also see here, we have four uh, four columns. So we create, uh, we use uh, a date. So when was the dining table occupied? Then also a particular hour. So uh, yeah, as, as I said, like usually you want to go to a low level detail and maybe you have discussion with clients and then you say it needs to be on our level. Then, uh, I, then I have a, a dining table ID, um, which obviously refers to a dining table. And uh, and the dining table is nothing less. It's the same with you. Uh, it's also a data table with just 15 rows. I, I created 15 data tables and the customer ID. And that was the table that we what I just showed you with all that, all the first names and last names of the S and G and then across join. 
Um, but then, as you can imagine, if you want to create data sets, you also want to make sure you create a kind of a representative data set as well. So, for example, if you picking a random customer ID here for a table, you don't want the same customer sitting twice at the same hour at the same table, for example. So those kind of things, you know, when you 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 don't need to create a perfect data set, but yeah, you also want to be to have it to 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 be as close as possible to the reality. OK, let's um, dive into the DEX code and um, let's uh, digest this bit by bit. Um, first, I uh, I start with uh, the, the, all the dates and all the all the possible business hours because of course I, I need to start from some from yeah, from somewhere and then I say okay, I look at the different combinations of business hours and dates. This is a cross joint, so all the all the all the possible combinations. Then um, I'm going to determine. Uh, I'm going to uh, the, I call it seated chair. So basically, I want to to put people at the table, so the the the, the chairs needs to get occupied. Um, and here, what I also try to to emphasize here in Dax as well is that. The use of variables is very important because with the use of variables, you can explain what you actually, uh, yeah, what your, uh, what your, what your intent is, and, um, and then here, then, uh, then the next bit here is generate, and um, also here, like now to to, yeah, to go into all the details about what it exactly is is probably too much because I also see I only have. I think seven minutes left, Ben, right? Uh, let me check the timings. I think you were scheduled. Uh, Chris Mikhail's on at about uh, no 6.30, so um, you, you're good for 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, all right, cool. Um, so what this, uh, one of the characteristics of when you do a, a generate, it also, similar to a, a cross, it combines all, uh, Combines all the rows from um, from from the first of so generators two arguments, table one, table two, and it will also go through all the combinations. But the characteristic of generate is that it's executed in a row context, and when it, because it's executed in a row context, I can then also use columns from the from the first uh, table. Um, the reason why I'm using here um, nested functions and usually I like to use variables all the time, not using all the nested functions. But here I had a no choice because if I would um, use uh, variables, then it wasn't generating the uh, the random numbers. And um, yeah, so I, I cannot go into too much more detail. As I said, like the code will also be available later. Um, but um, what we're doing here is so I start with the dates and the business hours, then I'm combining it with all the, the dining tables, and then I'm going to um, to, put, to pick a, um, to pick an, uh, a particular uh, customer. Um, in this bit here, I'm also taking into account that in weekdays it's more busy than on uh, weekends. So that's also something I, I, I put in here. And uh, finally, in, the, in, in, in this occupation part, this is where I, uh, I make sure that uh, I pick a random customer, but not, but only the same customer uh, once at the table. So this is uh, the dining table occupation. Then I think now it's also uh, interesting to look at the, 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 there's one other table, and this was also the most complex uh, piece of code. Um, the, the final one is that people actually are going to order drinks, and that is the consumption. And uh, for the consumption, again, a date and an hour and a dining table, then a particular customer orders a particular item. And here I um, 
you can see here that I'm using a, a column and, and it starts with data gen. When I'm, when I'm using da data gen, what it means is that this is a column that I've solely added for data generation purposes. So it's not part of the real data model. So later I will not use those. Everything that started with data gen, also here on the right hand side, I have some other uh, tables uh, hidden. Those tables are uh, only for the purpose of data gen. That's also why I hide them and they won't end up in the real data model. You know, that green model that I, uh, that I showed earlier. Um, here I also took into account, I knew which IDs were a dish and a drink, so I just uh, put it, I hard coded it here. And then what I do is I pick uh, the, the dishes that are ordered, the drinks that are ordered, and then uh, finally I do a union of the, of the two. And one of the functions that I found really nice is the generate series. So generate series, uh, it, it just produces a number, so it from, from, um, so the first, so it has two arguments, and then the first argument for, for if you do some generate series from one to nine, then you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and in this way, I can quite easily generate uh, data sets that are deferring. So, and what I've specified here, I have a customer that can eat an, his maximum amount of dishes, and then I use that by generating uh, the data. Okay, so now we have created all the tables. How does it uh, then look like? So we have uh, the dining table occupation and consumption. Then I have a, a date, business hour, and a dining table, uh, a customer, and the menu item. Let's finally look into one of the, 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 the measures. And um, the measures that I uh, created, I think that's also the, the, the trick when you, well, I always try to keep things as simple as possible because DAX is, as, is already difficult enough. And later when, you, when you're interested and you're going to explore this, uh, this uh, solution, then you can see that the, the, the measures that I, I wrote, I tried to keep them as uh, short as possible. So for example, uh, if you have a dining table count, it's just a count rows. Um, dining table. Uh, um, so, so here I have a measure, the occupancy. So I can imagine when you're running a, a restaurant, you want to see how many seats and how many dining tables are occupied. And uh, and, and one of the yeah the nice thing about DAX is you can you can reuse uh, existing measures. So you can. You can every you can keep things simple and then revert. So, for example, dining table occupied count is is here is just a simple distinct count of the dining table uh, occupation. All right, so now we've created a lot of code, but how does it actually uh, look like? And here can I, I ask, can I ask you? Know, I, I want to ask you another question if I can, Chris. Just to butt in. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Because again, it, it's about the right time. So, so our good friend Lewis, who's online, says, "What happens if your prototyped model ends up being too far removed from the actual data sources? You must have to keep an eye on what's available when doing this." So, I, I guess his point is that you've not yet seen the data data source, so you're going to make a lot of assumptions about what your customer may or may not want, and and how do you manage that in? In, in a consultancy or from a consultancy perspective? Yeah, so from a consultancy perspective, if you if there are data sources and you can get hold of it, the more you look at them and you look at the different values, uh, that will be very valuable because of course, what can happen here is that you might generate data and later it's not available. Um, but, then, but then the thing is, is that the, the goal here is also to capture requirements. So if you want to understand the business need, then at least you, you also need to know what's for, so how do you know what's missing? Then you only know that by um, yeah, doing this exercise. So when you do a data mapping, then you can also identify gaps. But as I said, like, of course, if you create like a whole model and then of like lots of things and it's not available yet, then you cannot, uh, yeah, then you cannot use it. Um, and but then is then then I would say as much as possible get the get insight into the real data set. Yeah. Okay. That that makes sense. Uh, and just from a timing perspective, you got another um, ten minutes, ten ten or so minutes. Yeah. Let's let's then 
uh, dive into the visuals. So because now you can, for example, everything you see is uh, is generated is just generated. So for example, here we see a, uh, we see a certain peaks. Well, the peaks were what what I uh, what I showed earlier is that the, 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 in the weekend people are ordering more. And for example, if I, if I uh, drill down in this one, so we can see it's six thousand uh, pounds. And then when I go into the um, for example, the, I call it the monkey matrix. Then I can see actually the the, the, the details. So why is this peak there? And then actually can see here where there's a particular date. Then you can see all the tables that are um, that are occupied. And when you uh, drill down, you can see the time slots. And then you can actually see people who who actually uh, yeah, consumed. And then you can see the breakdown of this uh, revenue. So you can imagine with this uh, with this dashboard, the, the, uh, you can in an early stage you can show them. Uh, yeah, show them how it's going to look like. But of course, valid point. It's also good to know that you, you need to you want to make sure that the, the data is available. But the, the good point is your starting point is the business need. And from the business need, you're going to create a good uh, yeah, a good data model. And maybe there might be some columns not available, but the tables probably are. Because for example, yeah, a customer table, if you look here at the data model, a customer or menu items, that's something that uh yeah that's that that's I, I will imagine it's somewhere stored in their organization all right uh i think i want to go back to the slides to to uh to summarize so with the uh the dex prototyping um you design your one data model your one first step to uh, your one your first step to one data model you start it immediately so instead of postponing it you probably never get one data model and you always get lots of different versions of the truth um, it allows you to get instant feedback from the stakeholder and also when you're getting more handy with creating those tables and creating those data sets you can yeah you can quickly uh, interact with the stakeholder and show them uh, results uh, soon. Then another thing is that um, this is also a perfect starting point for data mapping because you can imagine you, you you start with the needs of the client, then you have those data tables that I showed you uh, in, the, in the diagram. Then you can start go to the data sources to really ask what you really need. So one of the key things of a good data model is only load the things you really need. How do you know the things you really need? Well, this exercise of deck prototyping and the visuals and the dashboard, then you really know what's really needed because everything that's, everything that's in a data model is used in the visualizations and is already aligned with the client. Um, also, you can easily create large data sets for performance testing. As I said earlier, like why not Excel? Well, I can, I've done a demo at the SQL Bits conference also in Manchester. I created a billion rows, one billion rows in Power BI Desktop. How can you do that? Well, in DEX, you just you, you do a cross join and just, you just increase the numbers and it will go big. So you have the ability to scale up and do performance testing as well in an early stage of the development process. Um, Another thing is, of course, it could also be very powerful during pre-sales. So now I've, I'm a fan of Mowgli restaurant. And I, I love their food. But maybe if I would uh, try to sell Power BI with them, if I go show them a dashboard, I can. it becomes more tangible what a dashboard is. And if I use their menu and if I use their data, what already looks like their data, the chance that you win a client can also increase. Um, and finally, you need to use DAX as a... a, a as a query language, and this is the hardest, but you need to learn DAX. Eh? And one of the things that I've not showed in this demo is in, when I write this code, I usually use DAX Studio for this. Um, but yeah, that, that's an, another topic uh, on its own. Um, but that's the key here. That's the key skill to learn, to, to, to use DAX as a query language, because the query is basically a calculated table that you, uh, yeah, that you use. Um, then finishing off fake data is everywhere anyway, because we're talking about the Manchester curry mile and actually Manchester's famous mile isn't actually one mile long. It's just half a mile. So uh, yeah, not all data is uh, correct. That's uh, also a key takeaway from this uh, presentation. All right. But, 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 but it does have 
curry shops on both sides. So if you walk up one side and then down oh. the other side, you do get your mile. So my version of the truth is different to yours. Oh, that's a good, I, I do not know. Yeah, I should, should be careful making statements when you're not a local. So it's a good point. <laughs>